What it do, what it do, guys. It's DeAnthony here, man, a.k.a. Hood Scout, back again for another edition of the Hood Scout Podcast. And this is really a unique podcast, a podcast like no other. We're going to have athletes. We're going to have coaches. We're going to have intellectuals. We're going to have media members of all sorts. And don't forget, guys, to like this podcast, share this podcast, and help grow this podcast. This is not just my podcast. This is also your podcast. And the only reason it's going to grow is because you guys are going to be invested in it, guys. Sit back. Get your beverage of choice ready. Get your popcorn ready. Get your dinner ready. Get your steak ready. Get your vegan meal ready. Tune in, guys. Hood Scout. Peace. Hey, what it do, guys? Hood Scout back. Back again for another edition of the Hood Scout Podcast intro. Uh, man, this one was really, really special to me. Really, really uh, important to me. Coach Marion from the University of Texas. Uh, formerly at Pitt. Uh, one of Lindikoff there. One of the receivers. I mean, a great receivers coach. A guy that's going to be an offense coordinator and eventually a head coach very, very soon. He was a coordinator before, if I believe at Howard. Um, so th- this is a guy, man, he, he has an intriguing story. Um, you know, never gave up, went to junior colleges, uh, went, went to Tulsa, put up big numbers, went to the NFL, tours ACL more than twice. But here he is today at one of the premier universities, still chugging along, still going strong and uh, never giving up. So listen to this podcast, share it, continue to support this podcast, donate to this podcast. We're truly independent. Shout out to BS3. Let's keep this thing going. Peace. Come on, computer. Hey, hey, welcome back, guys. Welcome to the Hood Scout Podcast, man. I got a, I got an extraordinary guest. I'm very excited about this one. Um, hey, wide receiver gurus, get your notebook out. It's gonna be good. Coach, tell the people who you are and uh, where you're from. Hey, man, I appreciate you having me on. Uh, Brennan Marion. I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, coach at the University of Texas. Welcome. I know we don't got a lot of time, but we got a little time, Coach, so let's dive into it. I mean, I know you came from the bottom. Talk about your introduction to ball and really what it was like growing up for you. Uh, well, my first memory is really just, you know, football is big where I'm from, kind of like Texas. You know, you guys got the Cowboys. We got the Steelers. You know, and, and in my grandfather's backyard, um, my uncle and my brother, they're seven, eight years older than me. Mm. And when I was little, like four and five, they'd get me in the backyard and they would just beat me up, bully me, you know what I mean? Just throw me around. Yeah. And I used to go in the house and tell them, I'm like, man, they, they trying to hurt me. Yeah. But then I go right back out there and be making plays. And and so I always tell people this story, you know, my mom, we we, we grew up section eight struggling, you know single mom and uh my brother was begging her to let me play he's like brennan can play with the older kids he's he's killing the older kids like you need to let him play mm-hmm. and at the time she was like I, I can't afford that you know like i can't afford to put him out there you know what i'm saying and, and think about it you know in today's time 25 dollars is like a dollar you know what True. I'm saying? yeah but she was like our life's gonna be cut out if i get this 25 dollars. you better be good boy like you know and so she said no the first day she came back the next day and threw the twenty five dollars at my brother and said, "All right, go sign him up. He better be good." Yeah. And the first game, I had five touchdowns. So she was like, "I guess I got me a football player." Coach, what? How did those early struggles in life did that create a hunger in football? Like, I gotta make a way out, or was football more so just something you did to have a little fun? Uh, I had a friend, John John, that I was real close with that I grew up with. He he put on Facebook one day, like I always knew Brennan would make it in football. Uh, for me, people would say football like money and all that type. I never even thought about it like that. I never thought like football was going to be like this way I make. I just truly loved the game. Like I, I remember I used to line up my shoes, army men, whatever, create football games. I used to knock on people's door. I used to get in trouble by people's parents when we lived in the projects, knocking on people's door to get them to come out and play football with me outside. I always had a football with me. You know what I'm saying? I always was just trying to play football, learn football, be a part of football. I used to write down every every guy's name who got drafted. You know, like every little thing that I could do to learn football. My mom used to take me to the Steelers training camp because it was free. And I would sit there and I remember sitting there with Rob Woodson, LaVon Kirkland, like these guys and just sitting there all day and just like if I could hear one thing from them, like, okay, yeah, I learned something today. You know, so football for me was more just like I was just obsessed with it, loved it. 
And then as I, you know, as you start to realize like, oh, you know, as I got older and I realized like, oh, I'm pretty good at this, you know, like I could maybe do something with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Walk me and then you get to high school. Walk me through that high school experience. And what was your mindset as a high school student? And I, I take it a step further. Any lessons learned looking back now where you are versus, you know, I wish I would have known this as a high school student. Well, really, my elementary school years were pretty good. My mom built a solid foundation. We were pretty stable. Okay. Uh, then some things changed in our life. You know, a lot of things changed. And really in high school and middle school, I was just trying to survive. I mean, like dodging bullet, like, you know, like really trying to survive, make it, paying the rent for my mom, like really just trying to survive. So football was really on the back burner as far as like, you know, I wasn't a highly recruited player or going to camps. I went to one camp. <clears throat> I went to a different high school and middle school every year, some some years twice, you know, so really in high school and middle school, I was just trying to survive like trying to we was just trying to make it you know what i'm saying like i was working like three jobs when i was 10 years old you know what i'm saying i i was selling flowers at nightclubs i was washing cars like i was i was hustling like i was trying to make it you know what i'm saying like i was a street kid trying to make like me and my mom were trying to survive so really the football thing didn't come around again until i got with some friends you you know what i'm saying i had some friends who had some stability they had their dads in their life <clears throat> And they were training and i remember just being like man i love the game you know what i'm saying like i always loved the game but it was like i was up all night selling flowers and nightclubs with my mom to pay rent you know what i'm saying so i really wasn't didn't have that structure you know what i'm saying i wasn't going to school like we went to court for truth like i wasn't going yeah. to school every day you know what i'm saying like i wanted to but you know i had other things that i had to do so um once i got back to a structure uh you know, set up my, something happened to my mom, uh, my junior year, I had to put her in a woman's shelter. She was going through a lot. I had to put her in a woman's shelter. I was living on my own. And I started thinking about like, one of my friends transferred high schools. And I was like, man, I should just transfer, get us out of here, get us out the hood. Yeah. If I can transfer to this school, then I'll be able to play football and basketball. So my senior year was the first full year of football and basketball that I played. And I'm talking about like, Coach, I, I, I'm 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 talking about struggle to the point where I went to, I went to summer school, I went to a class before school started, and I went to night school just to graduate high school. Let, let me stop because I got it because this this I, I feel that on a deeper level. What did that <clears throat> produce in you? I mean, because everybody don't deal with that, but some of them do. Kids from the hood and you know this that and the other. What did that produce in you? Those, be honest, tough times, grinding like you were. Was it something you gleaned from those experiences? Cause those are hard experiences. Yeah, my senior year really just shined the light on that. I made all conference and my team went to the playoffs in football and basketball and I was really like shining. And it was like, man, just imagine if you actually just buckled down, had some structure. And that's why I chose to go to junior college. You know what I'm saying? I went to junior college. Uh, I remember Joe Moorhead was really the only coach that recruited me out of high school when he was at Akron. Now he's back at Akron, pretty crazy. Joe Moorhead was the one who recruited me because he had a family member that worked in my high school that I went to my senior year. And, uh, you know, I just didn't have the grade, like my grade requirements and all that stuff weren't good because when you transfer schools, my transcripts were terrible. Mm -hmm. And so I knew I was intelligent enough. I was going to, I wasn't going to school, not because I wasn't smart or I didn't know to work. It was because I had to get money, you know what I'm saying? And so the same thing with football. I knew if I buckled down and really, you know, got in a weight regiment, got on a plan, did what I needed to do, that I would be all right. And so that kind of helped me from the hunger standpoint. I was always hungry. You know what I'm saying? I always, I, I grew up around a lot of hustlers. And stuff. You know, I always wanted to everything, you know what yeah. I'm saying? That was always in my mindset. But I think that, that, that really what, what, what made sense for me when it clicked to me was I see these kids that got two parents. They've been in, tra they've been with trainers. They've been training every day and I'm better than them with no, yeah. No, just just out there playing. Like I'm eating yeah. once a day. They eating three times. You know what I'm saying? And I'm out here, and I'm yeah. and I'm proving it. You know what I'm saying? And that's when I knew, like, all right, we got to get serious. We got to find a way to to make this dream a reality. Do you think? Do you think having grown up like that that gives you an advantage in recruiting certain demographics? Uh, yeah. I mean, the greatest thing for me is like I've lived in all different realms of life. You know, like what I used to think was a curse. 
it's really helped me in college coaching and coaching in general because I can communicate with everybody. So I've lived in a, in a trailer park. I lived in the projects. I've lived well off, wealthy. I've lived in the city. You know what I mean? I've lived in all those different areas. So I kind of can vibe with a lot of different people. You know what I'm saying? Whereas they can't really judge me by my cover because when you open this book, this book has been all the places that you ever went, you know, so the six degrees of separation, I'm really connected to a lot of people uh, through my story and where God has taken me, you know, in different paths. So that kind of really, that really does give me an advantage. I feel like. Man, that, that's powerful coach. What, what was the name of the high school you went to your senior year? I graduated from Greensburg Salem high school. Okay. And then walk me through that junior college experience. Uh, junior college, it was, it was definitely rough uh, from the standpoint of, California junior colleges at the time did not have dorms or any means of like giving you food, you know, that type of thing. So, you know, I went out there with like $300 in a dream, like thinking that that would California, you ain't getting nothing on $300. You know what I mean? Gas is like 550 out there right now. So really didn't know what I was getting myself in for the first year. And, uh, you know, the best thing that happened to me, you know, I always say like, my grandma dying in high school catapulted me to graduate in high school and wanting to do something with my life. My uncle died when I was in junior college my freshman year, really. When I went home to go to his funeral, all the guys from the streets and stuff was like, man, I knew you'd be back here just like the rest, everybody else did it. I knew you'd come back. And so when I got to California, I kind of put in my mindset, like, yo, I'm not going back to Pittsburgh until I'm a superstar. Yeah. Like, I'm not going back there until I'm like, yo, I made it. Mm -hmm. So I made it to the league. So when I went back to California, like I went to a new junior college, I switched junior colleges because I got in trouble uh, with the coach. Me and him just didn't see the eye to eye uh, at my first school. And then so I switched schools. And when I switched schools, I lived basically in the locker room and I would stay at different people's house. And then I come back to the locker room or if there was nowhere to stay, I'd stay in the press box, the, the locker room. The, the hallways, outside, on the bus. Like, I would just find motels, just different places to stay. I had, like, two outfits that I rotated. And I was just like, yo, I'm going a, I'm to a make it any means necessary. I'm going to make it. You know, and there was no, like, that's when it became from, like, interested in making it to, like, I'm committed to, like, seeing this thing all the way through. There, there's nothing that can stop me in my path. Where did you draw inspiration <laughs> from, Coach? Was it was it just, like, you know, you say your, your uncle died, your grandma where was that inspiration to keep going? Because let's be honest, coach, that would have made a lot of guys quit and just say, I was depressed. I can't do it. Like what deep down, where did that inspiration come from? Well, I, I learned a lot from the people that I grew up around. I, I was blessed in my life where I saw successful people and I saw people that were struggling. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, there's a lot of successful people in my family. I got judges, lawyers, doctors, dentists, you know, v, VPs, there's a lot of people, but then I also got the hustlers and people that struggled and, you know, did, did the wrong thing. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's always like, I've always in the back of my head had, you got these two choices. You could be this way or you could be that way. Like, how do you want to live? You know what I'm saying? And that's really what it is. It was just came down to the point of like, everybody got to sacrifice something to get where you want to go. And, and people don't really like that. You know what I'm saying? I'm willing to go harder and longer and be uncomfortable and be in bad situation because that's just because I want to get it. Like I know in the back of my mind, like if you know you could get it, like yeah. you're going to get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I know in the back of my head, like I keep hearing this little small voice. I hear God's still voice telling me like Jeremiah 29, like if you could, you could do something. You're special. You could, you can make it. I seen all these situations that I got up, got out of, you know, like bullets, hitting the glass when I'm working in a nightclub right above me, I'm hiding under a table and VIP and boom, the bullets hitting, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, boom, I make it right. Crazy things happen. Eviction notice, I'm at, all these things that happen and I keep surviving through it. And I'm like, I know, I know I'm special. I know I got to, I know there's something out there for me. And really that's just the inspiration of like, yo, I got to keep going. And then realizing like, and this really hit me when I started coaching, like there's somebody with it worse than you. You know what I'm saying? Like you think that like, oh, I got it bad. Like we all think like, like, man, it's it's rough. Share your story and let somebody else share their story. And they'd be like, oh damn. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah. And man, like, I gotta keep going. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like winners keep going. Like I'm not I'm not stopping until till I get it. I don't believe in 
you know, like race coaches can't do this. You can't do that. Like, no, nah, I don't care where they move the finish line. I'm across them. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, that, that, that's good. That's good stuff, coach. Do you think your love for the game is also what catapults you? And what I mean by that, coach, if you didn't have a love for the game, would you have quit? Yeah, for me, like, like, you know, you hear about the process stuff now. But for me, like, there was never, like, I'm doing this for a result or an outcome. You know what I'm saying? Like, I remember, you know, something about, like, Jordan, he won the Bolitnikoff last year at Pitt or whatever. And people, like, look at my drills and stuff, and they'd be like, oh, you got these cool drills. I've been doing them drills since I was a JV coach. Like, them, <laughs> them is old drills. Them ain't nothing new. You know what I'm saying? I've coached quarterbacks, offense coordinators. You know what I mean? Like, to me, it's just like – I see some kids, we on a field, we got a ball, we're going to be great, period. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, everybody who wants to be great, come over here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, like, mm -hmm. when we going to go get it. You know what I'm saying? Like, it has nothing to do with what school I'm at, what, you know what I mean? Like, I got the same juice when I was coaching D2, JV, NAIA that, that I got at Texas. It don't, it don't matter. I'm going to be turned up, fired up every day. It's going to be the same. You know what I'm saying? When I was yeah. in junior college working out seven days a week, I used to tell them dudes every day, like, I'm going to the league. They'd be like, you ain't going to the league, boy. I'm like, I'm going to the league. Every day well, I would be like that. And they'd be like, it was in you. It's crazy. Yeah. But it was in you, not on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the big times, wherever we show up at, baby, we the show. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, wherever wow. we at, we, we here. Let's go. Wow. Hey, I love this, Coach. We 14 minutes in the Husky podcast. Got Coach Mary and the University of Texas wide receiver coach on. Coach, so you, you, you at the junior college and then you eventually transferred to Tulsa, correct? Yeah. So while that's a little bit bigger stage. Walk me through the mindset and the feelings at, at, at the University of Tulsa when you were there. I just felt like when I met Coach Malzon and Coach Norvell, Coach Graham, that they had the same, they had the same, you know what I'm saying? We we different, but they had the same mindset. They thought big, you know. And and they wanted to do things big, you know what I'm saying? And and the way that they talked to me and the way that they were coming at me wasn't like every other recruiter. Every other recruiter was like, Well, where's your mom? Where's your dad? Where where's this? Why are you not? Yeah. You know, like they didn't care that I had designs in my head and you know, you know what I'm saying? They weren't worried about that. They was like, yo, if you come here, we're gonna do it big. And yeah. this is how we're gonna do it. And I like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think a lot of coaches fall short on trying to judge kids and put them into this box. Whereas like we all have this matriculation process that we go through. Nobody's there yet. You know what I'm saying? No, nobody's there yet. You know what I'm saying? And you just got to keep letting a guy get there. That's your job as a coach. You're a guide. You're not a God over a kid. You know what I'm saying? You, you got them. And I just felt like the way that they were guiding me is where I want to go. They were thinking, Big. They had just came from Coach Miles and it came from being a high school coach. Mike Norvell was a was a uh, just had got done playing. He was at uh, Central Arkansas and he came up there as a GA. Coach Graham was a high school head coach that had started to blow up. And I just like that mentality of like, yo, we gonna do it big. Yeah, man, that's amazing. So it Tulsa. I mean, you had a really, really, really great, great seasons or whatever. After that. Uh, what, what was that what was that next step for you after when you got through from college? Yeah, that transition was tough. I mean, my junior year, I could have left for the draft. Yep. I didn't. That was the first place where I felt like, like, you know, when teams say, like, yo, this is family, I really felt like them dudes was family. Like, I was willing to die for all them dudes. You know what I'm yep. saying? And I was really close. So I didn't leave as a junior. I come back as a senior. I tear my ACL the last play of the game, conference championship game. I'm projected first, second, third round pick. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that was tough to go from like 40, 50 agents calling you a day, you know, like you the man, you the man, mm -hmm. you the man on billboards, you know, thinking I'm about to be like, I'm here. I made it. You know what I'm saying? To tear my ACL, getting picked up by the Dolphins as a free agent, getting in the starting lineup with the Dolphins, tear my ACL again before the season starts. That first year was really rough. I went back to all the things I said that I wouldn't wouldn't be. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I went back to my comfort zone. Of, I'm a Section A kid. I'm gonna be with my Section A people. We we got it. You know, like that was that wasn't what I did all that stuff for. You see what I'm saying? And I had a cousin who told me like, "Yo, you got a degree, dog. You yeah. you special. You different than us." Like, and I was like, "Yeah, you're right." 
And so one of my friends was like, man, you need to get into coaching, man. Da, da, da. You know, I was training, working out for the league again. He's like, you need to get into coaching or something. You need to get around some kids. And, man, that first day out on the field, I knew the rest of my life what I wanted to do after I started coaching them kids. They was looking at me like, coach me, coach. Like, whatever you say, coach, I got you. Yeah. You know, and they started saying their life stories. And I'm thinking, like, damn, I'm over here complaining about my little knee being hurt. This dude's living in the in the car with his dad. They got his brothers and sisters sleeping in the back of the truck bed. You know what I'm saying? And they, and they, and they don't, you know, and this kid's smiling every day, happy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And I'm over here sad. I, I got $200,000 in my account and I'm sad. You know what I'm saying? Wow. And so I started, that got me back right and got me where I needed to be. You know what I'm saying? And that, that really helped me coaching is really that transition. that changed me back to where I needed to be. Coach, what is that? And my father actually wanted me to ask you this. What's that combine process like for an outsider looking in? Like what is that? What is that like? It it really is like the 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 pony and the pony and dog show. I mean, you 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 just you fly in, you fly out. You know what I mean? You go through a series of tests. You really feel like a are you like a robot, a compute like it, you you fly in. I remember one day like you, you pee in the cup, you do your drug test, boom. Then you're sitting in your your girdle, your underwear, and a whole bunch of doctors are pulling on you, calling out your injuries to people. Boom. You, then you're interviewing with coaches, round table desk everywhere. Then boom, you're on to the, then you're, then you're there. Then you're, you know, it's on to the next thing, next thing, next thing, next thing. You know, it's kind of just like, damn. Yeah. You know, you, wow. You just feel like, whoa, you know what I mean? And it's a, that's why people are trying to say they don't like the combine and it's more yeah. comfortable at the, because of those, those feelings, those sentiments of just like, damn, I'm really just like a number. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. Boy, that's, that's good stuff. That's, that's for outside because a lot of people don't know. Uh, so you get into coaching. Walk me through that. I know you started at the was it the middle school level coach or no or the high school level? High school level, junior college, high school. I was kind of just like training kids, really. I just started okay. like you know. So my first year, I was the offense coordinator and 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 working with the quarterbacks, receivers, you know, doing the offensive stuff. And then I went back to Canada to try to play again. I tore my ACL up there the first first or second day I was up there. Man. So then I came back and I was like, all right, I'm going to go all in on this coaching thing. But really, you know, the way you, the, the money you make coaching in California is not great. You know, so I just had, my daughter was just born. So I was out there and, um, you know, I was working at, I was working at a community college. I was working at a college. I was helping out at the community college running the gym and I was coaching high school. So I was working three jobs. And then I was like, the only way I know how to do things, I only know, I only know, I'm cool, I'm chilling, or I'm taking it too far. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was like, one day I was sitting at work, and everybody kept asking me football questions. And the guy was like, man, you know, you really got to give up on this football thing. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, he's like, I could really see you being successful in this company and moving up. And and people that know me, like, I'm not no nine to five. I can't even sit still in here. You know, like, I'm like, when is spring ball starting? Like, I can't yeah. sit still. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, I just I just walked out. I applied for 300 coaching jobs, and I got a high school head coaching job at a school that nobody wanted. I got the job because nobody wanted the job. They had a hazing scandal the year before that was still ongoing. And they were probably going to cancel the football program. They had seven guys when I had my first football meeting. I mm. was 25. Wow. And we went from – they were like one and nine the year before, really bad. You know, seven players in the first meeting to having like 45 guys and going to the playoffs the first year, having a field in the varsity and JV team. Mm -hmm. And so throughout this process, you know, people say like – you know, people say things like when, when, when black coaches rise, you know, you're like a self-promoter and all these different things. But – the way that I've been promoted has always been through the kids or other coaches seeing me coach. Mm. Right. So when I was coaching JV, all the kids would tell me, like, Coach, why are you even here? Like, you're a, you should be coaching college. You should be coaching here. Da, da, da. So that gave me the – it sparked the idea to start applying for high school head coaching jobs. <clears throat> let, let me ask you this, Coach. What did those kids see in you? Was it just your IQ, your knowledge of the game? What did they – even the kids, because the kids can't see a lot of stuff. What did they see in you that made them say, Coach, you should be at college? I think when people look at you, when you walk into a room, you should you should 
that room should get excited. It's like kind of like when you pick up your kids from school and they scream, Daddy, like yeah. they, they should be excited when you come in the room. So that's that's kind of the first thing I think. When I when I walk into a room, people get people get excited, you know what I'm saying? And then you should be able to inspire people. They should look at you and be like, yo, that's a person of character. That's a person that, you know, walks in walks a certain way. You know, they've been through something. You know what I mean? They can look at them and go like, yeah, that person inspires me. Then the next thing is they got to see that you love the game. You know, like I love the game and everything that comes with it. I mean, every little thing you could think of that people don't like, I like it. I, I like all of it. I want all, you know what I mean? I want everything and, and, and then some that come with it. You know what I mean? Huh. And then they see that I really care about each kid. Every kid that shows up, as long as you show up, I'm a, you know what I'm saying? But the thing I love that I learned from like Mike Tomlin, he said that, you know, like everybody talks about how you get they, their average player to be play good, you know, and that's important. Mm -hmm. But most coaches forget that you got to get your best guy to be his best all the time. You know, like your elite player to play elite every week. You know, and I, I think that's what's helped me bump up. You know what I'm yeah. saying? My goodness, Coach, I love this. We're coming up on 25 minutes. Got a few, just a few more questions. Coach, man, I love this stuff. Coach, let's let's transition to college ball. So what was your introduction into college ball as a coach? Okay, so this is my last one because I got to go to this Okay, one. okay. Okay. All right, but I, I kind of talk about the college process. So same thing, when I was a high school head coach, college coaches would come by, watch my practices, go, you're detailed, you're organized, you're on point, you got all this stuff written out, da, 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 boom. You should be a college coach. And I'm like, yeah, I hear you, I hear you. You know, and so when I went to a seven-on-seven -seven tournament at uh, UVA, Coach London was the head coach there. And that's my dog. He, he changed my life, you know what I'm saying? He got me to be, a, a, a you know what I mean, a real real big-time coach, you know what I'm saying? And so I just took my team. I took over an 0-10 team, big school. It, it was all white dudes, you know what I'm saying? We had one, we had, what, I think two or three black kids on the team at 125 guys, I mean, so, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And we went. And we won the championship the first year, the conference championship. And we would go to these seven on seven tournaments and we beat teams that got brothers on them. They're supposed to be the team. We pull up <laughs> and I got my boys from the farm and trailer park and we on your ass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and people be like, oh, snap, who's this dude? And and Coach London said, if I ever get the chance to hire you one day, I will. You know, I'm a, I'm a, he said, no, he said, I'm going to hire you one day. He sent me an email when I, I sent him a thank you email. And he said, if I get a chance to hire you one day, I will. He got the head coaching job at Howard and he called me and said, man, you ready to run that, them high school plays you was running? Yeah. And that's what he let me do. He gave me, gave me a chance to, to do that at the college level, OC and quarterback coach for him at Howard. And then we went to William and Mary and then that kind of just, you know, I kept turning down jobs. It was, it was hard to leave coach London. You know what I mean? I do. It was like, like my guy it was really hard to leave him. Uh, but he told me like, man, you, I'm, I'm, I'm like stopping your career. You got to take off. You know, it's your time. Like, go go out there and go be great. And, and that's kind of what happened. So really, to let, sum up this lesson, man, every every opportunity you had, you made the most of that opportunity. Man, that's a blessing. 30 minutes in, just about. Coach, take care. Sign out. Peace. Hook no doubt. My doubt. Hey, all right. <laughs>